What's going on YouTube? What's happening? Rudder 19 back with y'all with another video. If you're new to the channel, please like, comment, subscribe, hit your notification bell, and drop as many comments as you can down below. Like and share video. Woo-wee. Hope everybody is all right. Hope everybody is blessed. Hope everybody is doing good and everything. But uh, if you're going through a bad patch in your life, if you're frustrated, if you're aggravated, please understand some God loves you, God cares about you. Cast your cares on Jesus and everything because he loves you. Don't give up hope, you guys. If you lost a loved one and everything, or somebody that you know that's close to you that have recently died and everything, please understand someday in a better place, they're in heaven, in the arms of Jesus. Okay? Stay motivated, you guys. See, life gets tricky. Life throws you curveballs. And sometimes life be trying to tag you out like they do in baseball. But make sure you maintain your focus. Maintain, keep your poise. And don't lose your mind and everything. Try not to lose your mind. Okay, trust me, I know it's as hard as as hard as better. It's easier said than done. I put it that way. You keep the drive alive, you keep the dream alive. Okay? Don't give up hope, you guys. God got a blessing with your name on it. Whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're dealing with and everything, please understand something and everything. Give it over to Jesus and he'll heal you. He'll bring you through the process and everything. Life, that's all life really is, is a process. That's what it is and everything. So just please understand that you guys stay motivated. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, real quick and everything. If you're new to my channel, please understand something, you guys. I talk about real shit on my channel. I ain't here to bullshit nobody. I ain't here to lie to nobody. I'm here to give you real unedited content. This ain't nothing rehearsed. This ain't nothing I wrote down uh, a few minutes or an hour ago. And everything. This is me giving you straight from the heart to y'all and everything. As you can see, I finally got all that damn grass and shit off my face. I finally got me a haircut and everything. You know, I needed one bad. Trust me, I know. I was looking like, as my mom would say, Wolfman Jack. But anyway, you guys. Also, y'all, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to point out your sin. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life and everything. I'm not here to do any of that. Okay? I am here to challenge you to be a better man or a better woman. Okay? Once you got the knowledge and everything, it's up to you to what you are, uh, what you going, how you going to use it, what you going to do with it. Okay? You want to hear bullshit, you on the wrong channel. You want to hear real shit, you on the right channel. Alright, let's make sure that everything, somebody says some negative to you, please tell them to go straight to hell. Because I ain't got time for negative. Your ass don't want to watch it. If it's born or if it's two, oh my God, I can't believe he said that. Take your ass on. Okay? Alright, you guys, the topic of conversation today, it is called, Father, where are you? I repeat, Father, where are you? You guys, I hate to be a part of this statistic. But unfortunately, I am and everything. You guys, I've not seen my biological, quote unquote, if you want to call that and everything. I don't believe in that. I believe the man that raised you is your father or dad and everything, whatever how you want to put it and everything. My dad personally is Mr. Uh, Andrew Mallory. That's my dad. Always have been, always will be. I'm not going to change that because he's the one that raised me. I don't know that other jackass. Um... But unfortunately, my quote-unquote uh, biological dad, a sperm donor, whatever you want to call him and everything, I hate to be a part of this statistic, but everything, but I haven't seen this ass since I was 11. When I was a, when a kid, you know, younger and everything, he was in and out of my life. Now, I, I'll be honest with you, it brought me a lot of anger, a lot of frustration, and um, it brought me, you know, a lot, of, a lot of pain and everything, but I quickly grew out of that and everything as I got older and understand that people, like I said, just don't give a shit about you. That's been a common thing for me throughout life anyway. I'll touch on that later. But here's the thing, you guys. What I want you to understand, especially if you're a man, or you can be even a woman and everything. If you ain't get a chance, like Luther Vandross said, to dance with your father, or to spend time with your dad, and, you know, kick it with your dad and everything for whatever reason. Maybe he may have passed on, maybe he may have abandoned you. Maybe he had walked off and left you or abusive to you, whatever the case may be. If you didn't get a chance to have a positive relationship with your dad and everything, let me tell you what's, what's nine times out of ten is going to be a result of that. You're going to have trust issues. You're going to be viewing life differently and everything. You're going to have, it's going to be to a point, depending on if you're a woman or man and everything, excuse me, you're going to get to a point and everything where you're, going, you're not going to be willing to accept anybody. That you don't want, you ain't gonna let nobody get close. Trust me, I know. But let me explain something to this. I'm gonna pull some stuff out of the Bible here, okay? 
And I'm not twisting. By no means, when time you hear me mention anything about the Bible, I'm not twisting it. I'm not being phony with it. I'm not trying to use it to make or anything like that. It's just telling you what's real. Example. Let's take the story of everything of Abraham and Sarah and Isaac. Okay? Now, I told uh, Abraham, notice he didn't tell uh, Sarah and everything. He go up there and sacrifice. Pretty much, you know, uh, heal your son Isaac and everything. That's pretty much what God said, in other words. Now, of course, Abraham, like any other dad, any other real dad and everything, would say, like, you know, man, come on. I'm just, you know, Brandon Eisen. Man, come on, man. It's my son here, blah, 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 and everything. Why I got to do this and everything. Everybody talks about that. But here's the part that don't nobody want to talk about. How do you think Isaac felt? That he know and everything that he's gonna be put on this rock and be killed by the man that helped him being conceived. Think about that for a minute. How did Isaac feel? How did Isaac feel and everything? He know that my own dad, my own flesh and blood and everything is gonna take my life. Now, true enough, God did tell him to do it. God did tell him to do that, but God quickly changed his mind. But I'm just telling you and everything. It's all about perspective, people. Give you another one. What about the hell? What about our Lord and our very own Lord and Savior Jesus? Our very own Lord and Savior. When he was on Calvary and everything, just like I said in another video entitled uh, Now is Personal, let's flip that from a different perspective, from Jesus' perspective. He asked God Almighty, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Now, everybody, you know, like we said, we know why Jesus was down here. We know what he was sent to do. He was sent to die for our sins so we can have a chance at everlasting life. Okay, anybody with a brain should know that by now. But do you ever think that Jesus wondered, like, man, I done what you asked, but what's going on? Well, why, why, why are you doing this to me? Why, 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 what's going on here? Why is this happening to me? I done what you told me to do. You tell me. Um, another thing, how this is, you know, what makes me laugh about this. Well, Father, where are you? And everything. How many dads, how many, I'm sorry, how many kids out there have asked that question? When the last time you seen your dad? If your dad passed on and everything, I'm sorry to hear that. But if your dad abandoned you, and everything there forever will be a scar there that unless you do some due diligence probably will never heal and people take that lightly by the way because you know niggas ain't shit no way according to america but a lot of people take that you know they take that like it's light okay your dad ain't your life big deal please understand something the power of having a, 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 a dad and a husband in the house you have somebody there that provides structure, somebody provides discipline, love over everything, and somebody provides and everything how a man should be. One thing that all young girls, especially daddy girls out there, shouts out to all the daddy girls out there, the reason why you love your dad so much and everything, because he was the very first person to show you how a man is supposed to treat you. And that's how, uh, as a, uh, supposed to treat you like a queen, a princess, and everything. That is why so many girls are so close to their dad. Or, that's why so many girls grow up getting men, like, getting men like their dad, and everything. So just keep that in mind, you guys. Keep that in mind, okay? All this talk and everything, you know, father out of the home, you know, I can raise a kid by myself, I don't need no man, it's a bunch of bullshit. Especially if you have boys. You gotta, you gotta understand something and everything. When you are raising a young man and everything, he, gonna, he needs his father there. That's why he ain't got time to be fighting with your ass in and out of the damn courtroom over some damn child support and everything. That wasn't fighting in and out of the courtroom when y'all was there and laying there making it. Let's get shit right and everything. The thing about it is, you guys, by having that father in that house, what he does and everything, he is the enforcer. If the wife lay down a rule, 
the father's there to enforce it. Just like if society lay down rules, the policeman is there to enforce it. So I'm just telling you in everything, the father's the police of the house. It's his job to make sure shit ran right. It's, made, it's his job to make sure that shit is in order. That's what a man's job is, a father and a husband. But like I said and everything, us as black men, we get such a bad rap. And what, what trips me out, you look at one father, two fathers, hell, a hundred fathers and everything, and you say that's how all black fathers are. That's not true. And shouts out to any black man out there and everything who's taking care of kids that's not even yours. And you're doing a better job than the original uh, man that was there that made the kid. And shouts out to my dad once again and everything. I appreciate you and I love you, dad, and everything. Once again, talking to Mr. Mallory, or OG Pop, I like to call him. So I'm just telling you guys and everything. Keep that, keep that in mind, y'all. How do you think Jesus felt and everything? He's calling you and saying, Father, why have thou forsaken me? And of course, I know everybody going to say and everything that God responded and everything, you know, saying, you know, son, in other words, that's what I sent you here to do. But please understand something. Anytime those words utter out of a, a son's mouth to his dad, Father, why have thou forsaken me? Well, why are you doing me like this? Please understand something. That sets the child up and everything for emotional turmoil. That's why me and you have to be careful what you say to your kids. You gotta be careful what come out your mouth and everything. Yeah, they gonna pitch you off. Yeah, they gonna make you mad. Yeah, you wanna wring their neck. But you can't say shit to your son or your daughter to my, I hate you. I wish I, your ass was never born. You would never amount to anything. You gonna be a loser just like me. You don't say shit like that to your kids. Speaking to my men now, we have children. Don't give a damn how many you have. Each child and everything that you help conceive that is on this damn earth and everything is a reflection of you. Each child that you help conceive and everything have a piece of you in them. They can't help that. It ain't their fault they here. So keep that in mind and everything. I know I've asked myself that, that question many times. Dad, where are you? Why did you abandon me? Why did you do mom wrong? What, what, what the hell? Well, why, why you leave me here and everything to deal with this crazy ass world by myself? It just makes you wonder. And please understand some of you guys. How a, a daughter sees her father is how she would see the men in the world. And if any, if, and I, she, if she's close to her dad, like I said, a daddy girl, she's not going to accept any man that does not represent or, uh, excuse me, or, um, or is a reflection of her dad. She's going to get a man that's a reflection of that. Ask yourself one question, ladies. And hear me out clearly. I'm talking about ladies who are close to their dad. Like I said, daddy girls. Are you, the man that you with now, or the man you made kids with, or the man you used to be, whatever the case may be, if you are close to your dad, look at the man that you picked. And you will find out and everything that is something about that man you pick that reminds you of your daddy. It's a, it's a, it's a common, common law, y'all. Boys get uh, uh, women and everything like their mother. Not all the time, not all the time. Boys get women like their mother. And girls get men like their father. And sadly and tragically and everything, sometimes boys end up getting women like their mother, but their mother may have been a stripper, mother have been a prostitute. And that, and the sad part what a lot of parents don't understand, what you display in front of your kids, that's what they gonna put in, excuse me, put in their mind, oh, that's how a woman should act. That's how a man should act. That's not right. Or a woman who will be attracted to an abusive man because he's, because she saw her dad hit her mother. Therefore, and everything, She's going to think that's what, a, uh, in order for her to, uh, excuse me, act right and everything, she's going to think that that's what a man's supposed to do, hit a woman, which is wrong. Shouldn't no man or woman be hitting nobody. Keep your damn hands to yourself, okay? So make that clear. But they just wonder and everything. You ask yourself and everything, Father, why have, they forsaken, why have thou forsaken me? I'm sure Isaac is sitting up on top of that damn mountain and everything where Abraham they, they put in the movies he was holding a knife or whatever the case may be. 
but you finna take my life, Dad. I mean, I can't do anything about it because you was instructed by God himself. But sometimes, though, I ask myself and everything, God, I know I may have made you mad. I know I may have made you feel this way or feel that way and everything, but sometimes I wonder, if you got upset with Jesus because he had my sin, I'm gonna speak for myself, yeah, he had my sin on him, then what would you do to me had Jesus never stepped on, on Calvary? Jesus never went on Calvary. It gets me wondering why, that's what gets me asking questions. Now I'm not saying God don't love me, don't, 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 don't get it twisted now. But I'm just saying, it gets me wondering sometimes about some stuff. Let me ask you, all the parents out there, have any of your kids ever came and asked you, Mom, Dad, do you love me? I ain't talking about jokingly either. I'm talking about really asked you, looked you straight in your eyes, asked you, do you love me? Yeah, I'm sorry for making you mad and everything. I'll, I'll leave. And I said that to say this, you guys. I know I normally are, is animated. I know I'm normally animated in most of my videos. But I'm kind of relaxed here and everything. Because a lot of kids and everything need to know where their dad is at. A lot of kids and everything grew up abandoned. A lot of boys grew up not knowing how to, how to uh, treat a woman because they saw their dad not treat their mother right. And then you wonder why they grew up and act crazy. Then you wonder why they grow up or the uh, boys grew up and they seen their mom playing their dad. And then you wonder why the boys don't respect women. So I'm just saying, same thing with the girl. She's seen how her mother treated her dad and everything. Now she thinks it's her, it's her job to play every man that she get. Or she's seen her dad uh, mistreat her mother or play her mother, you know, check on the side or whatever the case may be. And now she can't find a man that she can trust. That's why I say all this stuff work hand in hand, you guys. Keep that in mind and everything. But I'm just telling you, stuff is real out here, y'all. If you have a father that does love and care about you and everything, please God obey him and try to listen to him. Try to try to hear what he has to say. Because remember and everything. Like I can say I ain't seen mine since I was 11 years old. I'm a 32 year old man. You do the damn math. This stuff ain't right, you guys. This shit ain't right. We got to get back to being fathers instead of just being sperm donors. Get back to being fathers and everything instead of just somebody laid up with a damn liquor bottle. Get back to being fathers and everything instead of somebody who can show your son how to screw every damn woman you see. Get back to being fathers instead of showing your daughter and everything how or what to do to a woman if she don't act right and everything mean by hitting her, which is wrong. We got to do a better job and everything. And like I said, America, TikTok, YouTube, uh, social media and everything, all black men are not like that. All black men ain't lazy. All black men ain't incompetent. All black men and everything don't care about their kids and everything. That's a bunch of bullshit. Ain't nothing but a stigma, stereotype bullshit and everything that they balled up and try to spit out to the world. There are black men that care about their kids. There are black men that will fight to the death for their kids and their wife. But the problem is those kind of black men don't get, don't get recognized. They get swept under the rug. So I'm just asking you guys and everything. If you have a dad that loves you, if you have a father that cares about you and everything, because remember, how you see your earthly father will be will be a huge, a huge uh, mountain or a huge mole how uh, you will recognize God. Because remember, you never seen God before. The only thing you know as the child and everything, this man that's standing in front of me is the man that I call dad. He's the closest thing to God that I know, given the position that he's in. So if he's if he's walking away from me, if he abandoned me and everything, you might thank God to do that. You see what I mean? So just keep keep that in mind, all to my fathers out there. Please understand that and everything. Your actions do matter. Your words that you say to your kids, I don't care if they grown. All this and then something else. What's all this shit because they get 18 and everything? I ain't got, I'm going to stop being your dad. That's bullshit. That's what you got to amp up being the dad. Because they're going to be coming to you. Oh, dad, I didn't, my uh, car broke down. 
Oh, uh, dad, my thing. Now, and I get this. I get you got to teach them discipline. Teach them, you know, everything what to do. Teach them how to handle stuff. Teach them how to save their money. I get that part. Don't get me wrong what I'm saying here. But what I'm telling you is and everything, just because they're 18 or older or whatever and everything, don't mean you just shove them to the side and treat them and everything like they just an associate. Remember, they're still your son. They're still your daughter. They're going to always come to you for advice. They're going to always come to you for help. Ain't no way, there's no way around that. You're their dad. And truthfully speaking, you should be honored that they come to you. I'm not saying borrow money or nothing like that. I'm just saying, you know, hey, yeah, I'm going to make this business move. You think it's the right move to make? Dad, I'm crazy about this girl, dad, and everything. But you think, you've seen her before, dad. You think she's right? Well, what you think? And remember, fathers, understand something. Your words matter to you, which your words carry weight to your kids. So be careful what you tell your kids to do. All right? It's Friday right 19, you guys. I ask all the fathers out there. I ask all the fathers out there. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Are you in jail? Are you dead? Are you sleeping on the sidewalk with a wine cooler? Are you sitting somewhere in the hospital? Are you laying on the ground shot up? Are you inside the house where I can get to you and talk to you? Do you abuse me and abuse my brother and sister and my mother? Where are you? Daddy, we ain't got nothing to eat in the house. Where are you? But don't nobody want to hear that, though. That's too deep. I got to focus on the entertainment. But it's Beretta 19, you guys. Y'all be blessed. And I even ask my own and everything, my own, I'm just say sperm, don't you see? I never will call him dad. Where are you, man? Why are you? You missed out on a good man. You missed out. But I can't get too mad at you. Because a lot of people push me to the side. I'm used to it. But it's all right, though. As you see, I'm doing okay. Fred 19, be blessed. Fathers, why are you?